Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL Q1 which is the Pythagorean Theorem. So you should have some experience with the Pythagorean Theorem up to this point, especially with the last several years of algebra. And remember the Pythagorean Theorem is something we use when dealing with right triangles. So I already screenshot this problem from IXL but uh, I'm going to write the uh, some notes right here. So remember Pythagorean Theorem we can use with any right triangle and we can use it to figure out missing sides of right triangles. So we have two legs to every right triangle and that's going to be the short leg A and the long leg B and then the hypotenuse C. Remember the hypotenuse or that slanted side is always 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 going to be the side that is opposite to the right angle. It's always going to be opposite from that right angle okay a and b don't really matter so much where you place them okay a is typically the shorter leg b is typically the longer leg but you can switch them and there really is no consequence for that and how you're going to find missing sides so if you're missing a or missing b or missing c you can figure out what any of them are and how you do that as you might remember is a squared plus b squared equals c squared right this is Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, so we will apply that to this problem here. The size of a computer monitor is defined as the diagonal distance between opposite corners of the monitor. Brennan is buying a monitor that is 15 inches by 20 inches. What is the size of the monitor? Okay, so let's analyze the problem here. We have the size of a computer monitor is defined by the diagonal distance between the opposite corners of the monitor. Okay, so we have our monitor right here. We'll draw it, something like this. And it says the diagonal distance. So this is how the uh, any computer or a TV monitor is defined. It's how long it is from corner to corner like this. Okay, so it says he's trying to buy a monitor that is 15 inches by 20 inches. So we can go 15 by 20 inches. Pretty small, but go figure. Uh, what is the size of the monitor? Okay, so we just established that the monitor size is going to be defined by our diagonal here. So it really wants us to find C, right? Because we can split this monitor up into two different triangles. And so since we know the long leg and the short leg, as in the width and the height of the monitor, we can figure out what that diagonal distance there and therefore figure out what they call the size of the monitor. Okay, so we'll go 15 squared plus 20 squared equals C squared. All right, so now we're gonna do 15 squared. 15 squared is just 15 times 15, which is 225 plus 20 squared or 20 times 20 is 400. And then that is gonna equal C squared. Okay, we'll combine the like terms on the left side. 225 plus 400 will be 625, which equals C squared. Are we done yet? We are not done yet because we don't want C squared, we want C, right? So what we do here is now we have to square root both sides. Square root both sides. And remember, square rooting is basically just the opposite of squaring. Squaring, we are multiplying something by itself, so the same number by itself to get a larger number. Square rooting is going backwards. Uh, square rooting is what two numbers or what number times itself is going to equal our big number here. So when we square root 625, what times what equals 625? It's just the opposite of squaring. Well, 15 times 15 is 225. 20 times 20 is 400. And 25 times 25 is going to be 625. So the square root of 625 is just 25 equals and then when you square root something that's squared you cancel those out right there so you can kind of go like this i guess and you're left with 25 equals c and there you have it okay so 25 inches is going to be our diagonal length and therefore the size of the monitor okay uh, another problem here a jogger is going running in a rectangular park that is 45 by 60 meters. So we can start to draw this out. OK. 
Okay. Joggers going running, rectangular park, we'll underline that. That is 45 by 60 meters. So I'm already going to draw a picture of this because I'm sure it's going to be important. So rectangular park, something like this. Okay. And it is 45 by 60. So we'll go 45 by 60 meters. Starting from where the jogger's car is parked in the southeast corner. So this is going to require you to, uh, to know uh, the directions on a compass, let's say, right? So just remember we have north, east, south, and west. So when it says the jogger's car is parked at the southeast corner, that means it's going to be parked at this corner down here. So this is where the car is parked. Uh, okay, and the jogger runs west along the width of the park, and then, so he runs this way, and then along the north, along the length. So the width and then the length is what he does. When the jogger reaches the northwest corner, so here, he takes a shortcut straight back to his car, which is going to be kind of like that. How far does the jogger run in all? Okay, so not only is it important to uh, for us to figure out what the length of our hypotenuse is, or C, we are also going to then add everything up because we want to know the distance overall, right? So how much do you run from this point to this point, then this point to this point, and then this point back to our beginning there? Okay, so we know, uh, I, I labeled this side as 45, but remember this is a rectangle, so we know both sides are gonna be 45 which kind of helps put things into perspective here. Again, we have two triangles. Okay, so we're gonna use Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This one's gonna be a, this one's gonna be b, and this one's gonna be c. So we will go 45 squared plus 60 squared equals c squared. And from here, we are just going to do 45 times 45, which is 2,025, plus 60 squared, which is going to be 3,600, and that is going to equal C squared. So now we'll combine like terms on the left side. 2,025 plus 3,600 is going to be 5,625, and set that equal to C squared. So this number is probably a little more <laughs> difficult to just know off the top of your head uh, for the uh, square root. So you can always get a calculator or you can go to the internet. In fact, I'll do that right now. We'll go to Google right here and I'll just type in SQRT, square root, and the number was what? 5625, so square root 5625, and it's 75, and if you noticed, it told us what it was before I even clicked enter. Square root 56, 25. Look, 75 right here, very easy, okay? So uh, we'll go back to our problem. And so C is going to equal 75. And that's it. So that's it for uh, the hypotenuse that is, right? So we know C is now 75, great. Now remember, do not put 75 here. You're going to get it wrong and you're going to be upset. It wants to know how far the jogger runs in total. So now we're going to count 60 plus 45 plus 75. So we'll go 60 plus the 45 meters he runs and then plus our 75 that he runs uh, diagonally. And so if we add those all together, 45 plus 75 is going to be 120. And then 120 plus 60 is 180. So 180 meters total. So now we will go back. Go back here into 180. And that is going to be correct. Okay. Oh, look. And now they give you some problems like this that give you an actual triangle instead of a word problem. So I'm going to skip these. Same deal though, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay. Another triangle. Another triangle up to 81, now to 93. Okay, so I will do this problem just to finish off this IXL. And just from what I can see, 
our C is probably going to be um, an unclean number is what I call, so a number with a decimal, it won't be so easy to uh, calculate in your mind. So uh, just something to keep in mind as we finish here. So we'll go A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So three squared plus nine squared equals C squared, okay? Uh, three squared is nine, nine squared is 81 equals C squared. We are left with 90 equals C squared. And now we will square root both sides. Let's cancel out. So we're left with C equals the square root of 90. And now um, you can do one of two things. You can either uh, go to your calculator, click on the square root and do 90, or you know go to Google, which I can do right now. Or you can factor it out. But for these IXL problems, it specifically says, if necessary, round to the nearest 10. So you just want to leave it within a decimal. But when I type, type that in, square root of 90, it comes up as 9.48 or 49, 9.49. 9.49. But it says to the tenths place, right, which is just one digit after the decimal. So we're going to round this to 9.5 like that. Okay, and that is going to be our solution. Now you have it. Okay, so this is where I'm going to stop the IXL tutorial video. Stay safe, take care, and I will catch you for the next tutorial. Goodbye.